Hello, dear students. Today's class will be on the causes of the Great Revolution of 1857, or how can we say that the Great Revolution of 1857 was the first war of independence? So, dear students, as you know that the Mutiny of 1857 or the Sepoy Mutiny was started on 10th May 1857 at Meerut by the Indian Sepoys. And it started from Meerut and the Sepoys reached Delhi on 11th May and Bahadur Shah Zafar was made their leader. They themselves chosen Bahadur Sajjafar as the leader who was the last Mughal emperor. So, <clears throat> dear students, as you know that V.D. Savarkar has truly expressed that the 1857 revolt was a war of Indian independence. He has described in his book the war of Indian independence. Even Ashok Mehta in his book that is 1857 the great rebellion has stated that it was the first war of Indian independence. Even Pandit Zawaharlal Nehru has also agreed in his book that is the discovery of India that the revolt of 1857 was the first war of independence. So dear students, if we have a glance about the causes of the 1857 revolt, then we can easily say that it was war of Indian independence only, or you can see it was the first war of independence. As you know that the British started its conquests after the Battle of Plassey in 1757, and just after 100 years, in 1857, it was felt that the British rule was totally despotic, full of chaos, full of disorder, and full of anarchy that was totally opposite for the welfare of Indian Sepoys and Indian people and gender. So, if you have a glance over the causes or the reasons of the revolt of 1857, we can say that due to political reason, religious reason, social reason, economic reason, military reason, the British started to torture the Indian people, especially the Indian Sepoys felt totally disgusted and they started the Indian War of Independence that was in 1857. So first of all we have to locate the first cause that is political cause or political reason. In this political reason we can say that under subsidiary alliance of Lord Wellesley, the native estates were compelled to keep a British army on their own expenses. When they were unable to bear the expense of army, they were forced to part with some of their territories on account of expenses of the British army. Means what? It was subsidiary alliance. Subsidiary um, alliance was such type of alliance that the British rulers we are having with the native states 
and the British army was stationed in that native state, and its expenses was totally governed by the ruler of the native state. So, next, uh, the administrative of native state suffered badly on account of the interference of the British in their internal affairs. That is, Henry made a journalist who had spent about 20 years in India before the great mutiny of 1857 has given a vivid picture of corruption, favoritism, and diversity in the so-called independent states. So, by this, what happened? By this, the people of India felt that they, are they were cheated. As we know that the annexation policy of Dalhousie, or we can say doctrine of lapse in 1856 had further increased the discontent and the feelings of revolt among the native states. He had annexed, in the name of doctrine lapse, the main main states of Sahara, Nagpu, Jhansi, etc. in the British Empire. We know that Maharani Lakshmi of Jhansi became a, a strong enemy of the British. The native princes had a fear that in the course of time, their state might also be annexed by the British. That was the annexation policy of the British. Dalhousie abolished the pensions and titles of the Indian princes. Prominent leaders like Nana Shahab became the strong enemy of the British. The Muslims were also unhappy because the British had made Mirza chaos instead of, that is, Bahadur Shah's son, Zaman Bakhs, the Euras of Mughal Empire. Regarding the policies of Dalhousie, it has been rightly observed that, I quote, they aroused the feeling of uneasiness among many of those natives who were capable of observation and reflection. The, uh, the answering regularity which, which it was carried out, the absence of that provocation at their part, which had seemed to justify the annexation of former rulers, created in the minds of many of them an impression that the British government was abandoning to those principles of good faith which had raised it above earlier conquerors entering upon a new career of unscrupulous acknowledgement. I unquote. So, next was the high military officers and soldiers of a state which had been annexed by the British Empire were dismissed from the services. Thus, about 8,000 soldiers had become unemployed. Since these soldiers were deprived of their services, they had become a, a strong army of the, a strong enemy of the British. The Talukdars and Jamindars were also dissatisfied with the British government because their land had been taken by their British. If they failed to pay the tax in the time, then they were punished in a worse manner. The dissatisfied Indians could not even make complaints against the high-handedness of the company's officers because the Indian courts were not competent to hear the cases against the Britishers. In the beginning, the Muslim rulers did not treat the Hindus with equality, but in the course of time, that Hindu-Muslim amity and cooperation had developed. The British rulers not only deprived the Indian states, both the Muslims and the Hindus, of high posts, but at the same time, treated them with hatred. So they joined together, and with a national spirit, they had the revolt of Hindu Seven. So this way, these were the political reasons. Now, dear students, we can come to other cause that was the religious cause. The English people were not religious fanatics like the Muslims. They did not interfere in the religious affairs of the Indians, but the missionaries who came to India for the propagation of Christianity twist against the Hindu and Muslim religion. Their main job was to go to the even rural areas and to preach their religion, that is Christianity. And it was against of the Hindu-Muslim amity, Hindu-Muslim unity. The missionaries even got financial help and the Indians embracing Christianity were given preference in the appointments on government posts. The Christian preachers abused the gods and goddesses and Muslim prophets. It gave rise to dissatisfaction among the two major communities, and by this, the two major communities just uh, uh, jointly 
launched some campaign against the British. Lord William Bentick modified the Hindu law to the effect that a Hindu becoming a convert to Christian religion will be entitled to his share in the family property. This was considered as an interference in the religion of the Hindus and created great discontent. During Dalhousie's reign, we come to know the prisoners were prohibited to keep a pot of their own for drinking water. The Hindus suspected that it was uh, done to convert them to Christians, thus their religious feelings were hurt. The Indians were also dissatisfied with the English education in the schools where Christianity was taught and other religions were openly disgraced, like the use of Sanskrit, the use of Persian were discouraged. So the the Hindu schools and Muslim schools of Madrasas, Maktabs, were uh, just uh, demotivated. The introduction of railways and telegraphs by Lord Dalhousie also made people suspicious who thought that this was being done by the British in order to trust their religious feelings. As you know that, the new type of cartridges were supplied to soldiers. It was rumored that these cartridges were made of the fat of cows and pigs. This agitated the minds of the Hindus as well as the Muslims. They took it as an affront on the religions. They thought that their religions will be uh, of no use if they start using the cartridges that was made of fat of cows and pigs. So this discontentment made Hindus and Muslims sepoys to work together to revolt against the British. So it was in war of independent Indian independence. Next, coming to uh, this cause, the English uh, legalized the Hindu remarriage, which was regarded as a violation of the Hindu religious laws. The system of sati was also abolished by the British. The Hindus, that is that, it was a personal and voluntary act. It was an ancient religious custom. It was a disrespect to the Hindu way of feelings. And uh, by this, um, uh, all Indians were against of the British. Dr. Isuri Prasad rightly remarked, I quote, the English, happy in their ignorance of Indian philosophy, attempted to produce Western notions of inheritance, marriage, and succession, and thereby cons uh, conspicuously and unconsciously trampled upon the most sensitive portion of Hindu's life. This was a great degradation and was a result of will settled policy. It has been a common belief of all imperialism that to degrade their concord, to disrupt their social system, to make them forget their past, to impoverish them, and then to lure them to the religion of the conqueror is a better guarantee of stability than more military strength. In its application to Indian society, however, the policy requires on its promoters, it is still to the people brought back to them to reminiscences of their glorious past and commented the causes of the division. So I think, the students, these many causes were coming to religious cause that was provoked in the minds of the Hindus and Muslims, and they worked together to oppose, to criticize, and even to revolt against the British Empire that was held in 1857 on 10th May uh, on the special day. Now, coming to the other cause that was social causes, Social innovations introduced by the British were disliked by the Indians and increased their discontent. The Muslims thought foreigners had ruled in India for several centuries, but there was not much differences between the ruling class and the rule, but it was quite different with the British. They not only despised the Indians, but also regarded them utterly incapable of any faith and insulted them on every occasion. It was written on the big, big, letters on the hotels and on the um, other auspicious occasions, the Indians and dogs are not allowed. So by this, the Indians felt um, disturbed, Indians felt humiliated, Indians felt disrespected, and by this, they, as a whole, they started to revolt against the British system. The British did not like to have any social relations with the Indians in general. They removed all Indians from high posts and destroyed their social status and respect. Abolition of sati, illegalizing child marriage, changing the laws of Hindu inheritance in case of change of religion was direct interference in the social life of the people. The British made the remarriage of widows varied. So the people thought 
it was simply crushing their culture and traditions and to impose foreign ideas and philosophy upon them. The British did not give due place to Indian literature and languages, just like the use of Sanskrit, the use of Persian, Arabic, etc. They tried to improve European literature by the name of modern literature to the utter disregard of the Indian languages. This created a great discontent among the native inhabitants. The British abolished the ancient religious education and the system of education introduced by Lord Macaulay was against the Indian tradition. It created a section of the Indians called Babus, <coughs> where began to hate Indian culture and civilization. Therefore, the right thinking Indians began to look with suspicious the new system of the English education. The British even passed the Caste Disabilities Removal Act of 1850 to, in total, to disregard the Indian social customs and traditions. It was an act of folly on the part of the British. The Morning Herald of UK wrote that it was a blow of Hindu law. It subverted one of the institutions most sacred in the eyes of the Hindus, the Law of Property, Video Remarriage Act of 1856. We are an open defiance of the Hindu sentiments and social uses. It is no doubt that social causes also played a great and very pivotal part in creating a feeling of discontent and animosity against the British. And what happened? The Indians, having without him, uh, having the uh, color, creed, or, this, or uh, you can say a religion, caste, they came together to fight against the British. <clears throat> As you know that economic causes also play a very pivotal role in the revolt of 1857. In the economic causes, the economic policy of the British also created discontent among the Indian inhabitants. India was looted and plundered several times by the foreigners. Even the Muslim rulers aimed to enjoy the money and property of India. I think uh, you all are knowing the fact that it was, India was known by the name of the it is a, uh, golden bird. But they didn't transfer this money and property of India to any other country and do the same in the country itself. It was only a sort of redistribution of the wealth within the limits of the frontiers of the country. But the British governed the country for the British crown, and the main aim was to expand and prosper at the cost of the Indians. India was treated a mere colony in its relations for the prosperity of the other country. Now, in the British economic cause, we can <clears throat> know that the British exploited the Indians in political as well as economic fields. Their aim was to extract as, as, as much as money as possible. They didn't pay any heed to improve the economic condition of the pigeons and laborers. Who are the pigeons? Who are the laborers? Where life was very, very horrible one. And the British came to India as traders with a clear aim to make the maximum money. Gradually, they captured the whole of Indian trade. Their main motto was only money, money, money brighter than sunshine and sweeter than honey. Oh, money, money, money. This was their main mantra. After the industrial revolution in England, India became the great market and center of the manufactured goods of England. The Indian trade and commerce began to decay. Here, the local works, the local, um, you can say, the cotton works, we are totally destroyed our local mills we are stopped even and the in the foreign market was flourishing in india the village industries and cotton cotton industries declined the weavers had to go to the agricultural field their life was while the workers lost their traditional staff the British extracted in India money by every possible means. Hands of salaries were paid to the British officers from Indian treasury, and the British merchants took away a lot of money from the Indians. A large money of persons had become a large number of persons had become unemployed on account of political and economic policies of the British. These unemployed persons became the great enemies of the British regime. The East India Company deprived the old Jamindars and Talukdars of the rights and captured their lands. They started exploiting the people who actually cultivated those and land. Thus, the Jamindars, Talukdars, as well as all the people who are greatly satisfied with the British. When the Talukdars took arms against the British, the people willingly joined them. 
then uh, it was uh, written by Dr. Sri Prasad that the political changes due to the advent of the British, the rise and fall of empires, so that he had little or no effect upon the economic structure and life of the people. The reason for that was the wealth remained in the country and whatever power ruled in Delhi, it was having. But uh, in the case of British, the um, uh, amount uh, of economic was going to the British itself. Now, next cause of the revolt of 1857 was military cause. Since the Afghan adventure of Lord Auckland, the discipline in the army had suffered a serious setback. Lord Dalhousie had returned to the home authorities that the discipline of the army from top to bottom, officers and men alike, is scandalous. The British had been able to establish their empire with the help of the Indian armies. In the year 1857, there were about 40,000 British soldiers as compared to more than 2 lakhs of Indian soldiers. The policy and treatment of the British had created great discontent among the Indian soldiers, and they had been nursing these grievances for a long time. The credit of starting the revolt of 1857 goes to the Indian soldiers. Some historians even regard the revolt of 1857 as a military revolt. Three fifths of the recruits of the Bengal army was drawn from above and north, north, northwestern provinces, and most of them came from high caste Brahmins and Rajput families. We are averse of accepting that part of the army discipline which treated them on par with the low caste recruits. During the governor generalship of Lord Dalhousie, three mutinies had occurred in the army. As we know, first mutiny was the mutiny of 22nd, that is uh, NI in 1849, the 66th NI in 1850s, and the 38th NI in 1852. The following were the uh, main uh, military causes. You can say first in military causes, the first point was almost all the high posts of the army were given to the Britishers, and Indian soldiers were thought incapable of holding high positions. So what happened? By this, the disunity, this, this, this type of discrimination uh, came in the minds of the Indian soldiers that they were compelled to serve on lower posts throughout their life. This was quite insulting for the Indian sepoys. Whenever Indian sepoys protested against this practice, they were mercilessly and ruthlessly suppressed. Thus, day by day, the disrespect against the British was on the increase. As we know that in March 1857, what happened? Mangal Pandey started mutiny against the British. Later on, he was crucified. The British officers treated the Indian soldiers very badly. They abused and insulted at every step and often subjected to inhuman treatment. In comparison, with that of the British Indian soldiers who had paid lower salaries and were not provided the same facilities for promotion and allowances which were given to the British officers and soldiers, it was totally inequality. And you can say that it, it was uh, not having the equal status also. So next point was the British never completely believed the Indian soldiers and always suspected the integrity and honesty. Napier had no confidence in the allegiance of high caste mercenaries. Three mutinies had already occurred in the army in previously, that was in 1849, 1850, and 1852. At the time of war, Indian soldiers were always sent on the front row, and consequently, a large number of them died in the battles. In spite of this, their services were not acknowledged by the British, and rewards were given to the English officers. It means the work was done by the English soldiers, English, but the reward was taken by the English officers. This was totally a discriminatory act. Next, the Hindus could not have a tilak on their foreheads, could not wear caps, etc. The Muslims could not keep maltes and beards. It was an affront on their religious feelings. A large number of British soldiers were sent to Europe, Middle Asia, and China in wars, and hence the number of British soldiers in India had diminished considerably. Under such circumstances, the Indian soldiers got the right opportunity for which they had been waiting for a long time. Even the Indian princes, uh, if you see the condition of the Indian princes, we are also uh, very, very bad. Indian princes had to struggle a lot. <clears throat> they were propagating the ideas of evil and discontent in the Indian army against the British. 
since many high military officers were appointed on the political posts, the discipline of the army was constantly deteriorating. Now, what happened? In 1856, Canning's government passed the General Service Establishment or Enlistment Act, which decreed that all future recruits for the Bengal Army would have to give an undertaking to serve anywhere their services might be required by the government. This act did not affect uh, old uh, incumbents, but was unpopular because service in the Bengal Army was usually hereditary. These soldiers who had been sent to the Army of Invasion of Afghanistan during 1809 to 1842 had not been taken back in the holds of the caste, if whilst declared unfit for foreign service, we are not allowed to retire with pension, but we are to be posted for duty at cantonments. <laughs> the privilege of free passage so long enjoyed by the shipwise was withdrawn with the passing of the Post Office Act of 1854. The distribution of troops was also faulty. So we can see we can see that disasters in Crimea War had lowered the general moral of the British soldiers. The British Governor General had reduced the number of soldiers in the army and the estates. Thus, a large number of Indian soldiers had become unemployed, they being dissatisfied against the British, where nursing grievances against the British, finding an appropriate opportunity, they had started agitating against the British government. So, my dear students, these many causes were there for outbreak of the great revolt of 1857. Now, we, if we have a glance over the immediate cause of the rebellion, then it was the introduction of these cartridges, as we have already discussed uh, under the religious cause. A new type of cartridges were supplied to the soldiers. It was rumored that these cartridges were dressed with the facts of cows and pigs. Cow is sacred to Hindus and the pig is forbidden to Muslims. This created a great discontentment among the Hindus and the Muslims who thought that the British was bent upon crushing their religious feelings. When the soldiers of the two communities protested against the use of their cartridges because the British government denied the truth of the allegation, this infiltrated the sepoys. You can say the fire of, the fire of vengeance once ablazed could scarcely be quelled by the representatives of Lord Canning's downwards that the story of these cartridges was untrue and was spread by Miss Chief Mongers. So thus we see that the grist cartridges became the immediate cause of the great revolt of 1857. However, this may be noted that the great buzzing of 1857 was not the result of uh, a chance cause only. I think uh, this was a kind of volcanic eruption. It was um, uh, amassing through all the causes, that it be political cause, social cause, religious cause, or military cause, all causes, even economic cause, all causes joined together, and the volcanic eruption came out on 10th May 1927. I think, uh, dear students, we can say that troubles begin first at Barakpur, where the discontent of the civilized were marked by the outbreak of incendiary fires. This openly mutinied, and the example was followed at Bahrampur. They said that one day a Brahmin soldier did not allow other soldiers to toss his ball. The other soldiers told him that soon the Brahmins would be deprived of their pride in the high caste because the government has supplied these cartridges, which was uh, made of the fat of cows and pigs for the in uh, for the infill rifles. So, if we sum up, we can say with surety that the mutiny of 1857 was if the first war of Indian independence and V.D. Savarkar. Ashok Mehta and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru has rightly said that this was the first war of Indian, Indian independence. Why the first war of independence? Because um, without having the bar of religion, without having the caste barriers, without having the economic barriers, all Indians joined together to have the mutiny of Indian Vichyaman. It came in the regions of social, religious, military, even economic and immediate causes. So I think I stop my lecture here. So thank you all of you for presence.